best friends should be together. That's how it ought to be. So let's pretend I'm part of you and you are part of me. Hello, friends, and welcome to a very special story time. Today is the International Day of Friendship, so I hope that you are ready to celebrate your friends. If you have seen my previous video, I was teaching you how to make these fabulous friendship bracelets. So make some friendship bracelets to give out to your friends. Remember, they don't have to be exactly the way that I made them. You know, that's just how I make them. You can make them out of plastic. You can make them out of pear, uh, pear cord. However you want. Give a bracelet to a friend today. All right. So um, a few shout outs today. I wanted to say happy birthday to my friend Courtney and uh, my, my dearest, dearest friend Arwen. Their birthdays are coming up, and so I just wanted to say happy birthday, and I love you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And also, I wanted to do a shout out to Emily. Emily, I really hope that you're doing better. You are a wonderful, beautiful person, as evidenced by all the friends that you have. So I love you, and I can't wait to see you soon, and hang in there. You got this. All right, so let's warm up. As you know, I like to do little warm up songs. Today, we're going to do a medley of songs. We're going to start off with um, I'm a Little Teapot, and then we're going to switch into Popcorn Popping on the Apricot Trees, and then In the Leafy Treetops, and we're going to end with Row, Row, Row Your Boat. So get up on your feet, standing up straight and tall, because we have actions for these. Yay! So let's wiggle it out. And let's do our warm up. All right, we're starting off with I'm a little teapot. <laughs> I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout. Tip me over and pour me out the window. And what did I see? Popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Spring has brought me such a nice surprise. Blossoms popping right before my eyes. I can take an armful and make a treat. A popcorn ball that would smell so sweet. It wasn't really so, but it seemed to me. Popcorn popping on the apricot tree tops. The birds sing good morning. They're first to see the sun. They must tell everyone. In the leafy tree tops, the birds sing. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. <laughs> I hope we had fun with that. So that's a fun little medley that you can do whenever you're feeling a little down. So be happy because we just put together four silly songs. <laughs> All right. And let's finish getting our wiggles out. Let's, let's uh, tap our heads to our shoulders and turn to the side oh, and roll our shoulders back and wiggle our arms oh, and wiggle our legs. Oh, all right, and let's read some stories. I had a really hard time uh, choosing stories for today. Um, I really, there are so many friendship stories that it was really hard to choose. So I decided to go with um, a shortened version of Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables, as uh, many of you know is my all-time favorite story and this version is retold by uh, Xavier Pirata. Um, it's originally written by Lucy Maud Montgomery and it's about a little girl named Anne Shirley. So Anne of Green Gables as retold by Xavier Perriot. Marilla Cuthbert and her brother Matthew lived in a beautiful farm called Green Gables near the town of Avonlea. Marilla and Matthew were getting older and needed help around the farm, so they decided to adopt an orphan boy. Matthew drove his buggy to the train station when the day came to pick the, up the boy. He looked up and down the platform, but there was no boy. Instead, 
there was a little girl with the brightest red hair Matthew had ever seen and a face full of freckles. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Are you Matthew Cuthbert? The little girl asked. Matthew nodded. I'm Anne Shirley, she said happily, from the orphanage. Oh dear, thought Matthew. A girl? What should he do? Well, he couldn't just leave her at the train station. He'd take her home and Marilla would set everything straight. He said shyly, let's go. Thanks, said Anne. She smiled and climbed into the buggy. Oh, the blossoms make the trees look like brides, Anne said as they drove to Avonlea. I'll call this road the White Way of Delight. Isn't that pretty? Matthew smiled. Anne certainly had a great imagination. It was dark by the Triton. They drove up the lane to Green Gables. My very own home at last, whispered Anne. Matthew's smile faded. Anne was going to be disappointed. Marilla met them at the door and she frowned. Where's the boy? You wanted a boy? Anne wailed before Matthew could answer. Oh, I should have known such a heavenly place would never be my home. Stop crying, child, and come in, said Marilla briskly. You'll stay till this matter is settled. Anne awoke to glorious sunlight streaming through her window. I wish I could live here forever, she thought. But of course, that was impossible. Marilla and Matthew wanted a boy. Look at that beautiful room. What an elegant breakfast, Anne said. Elegant? asked Marilla. I've been a maid for lots of families, Anne explained. Mills were noisy and messy, especially breakfast. When I'm back at the orphanage, I'll remember this is the loveliest meal of my life. Thank you, Marilla. Marilla's neighbor, Mrs. Lynn, was visited that morning. I hear the orphanage sent a girl instead of a boy. What a bother. When will you take her back? We haven't decided yet, answered Marilla. Anne bounded in. My stars, Marilla, said Mrs. Lynn. No one would choose that child for her looks. That's for certain, all those freckles and hair as red as carrots. <sighs> You're a rude, mean woman, Anne exclaimed, flushed with rage. How dare you? Anne, Marilla said, go to your room. Mrs. Lynn stormed off and Marilla went into Anne's room. Are you taking me back to the orphanage now? Anne moaned. You'll stay right here in this room until you're ready to apologize to Mrs. Lynn, said Marilla. I can't apologize, said Anne tragically. She hurt my feelings more than anyone ever before. Anne stayed in her room all day, miserable. At bedtime, Matthew knocked on the door. I missed you at dinner, Anne, he said kindly. Please, can you apologize to Mrs. Lynn? I will, said Anne, because you want me to, Matthew. First thing the next morning, Marilla and Anne went to see Mrs. Lind. Never could I find words to express my sorrow at my rudeness, said Anne, throwing herself on her knees and clasping her hands dramatically. <sighs> Not if I used a whole dictionary. Please forgive me, Mrs. Lind. My star, said Mrs. Lind. Of course I forgive you after an apology like that. My friend, Mrs. Ber Barry, just visited us just invited us to visit, Marilla said later. You can play with her daughter, Diana, while Miss Barry and I have tea. I hope Diana likes me, said Anne. Just don't let that tongue of yours run away with you, said Marilla. Anne and Diana liked each other at once. We both love to read, we both love the outdoors, and we both love ice cream, said Diana. We're kindred spirits, said Anne, throwing her hands up with joy. Look at that, they're kindred spirits. They're best friends already. Anne, you behaved nicely today, said Marilla, as they left the berries. I'm pleased. Would you like to stay at Green Gables for a while and we'll see how it goes? More than anything in the world, said Anne happily. I promise I'll try to behave nicely every day. Anne tried very hard to be good every day, and the summer passed without too many disasters. When fall came, Anne said, I'm so glad to live in a world of the Octobers. Don't you just love the colors of the leaves, Marilla? Mm. Oh, 
Uh, yes, said Marilla, distracted. I'm off to the meeting of the Aid Society. You may invite Diana over. I made you some raspberry cordial for a treat. It's on the shelf over the stove. Oh, thank you, Marilla. It will be a party. Anne wore her best dress and Diana wore her hair, her biggest hair bow. Marilla made us a raspberry cordial. And said Anne as she fetched the decanter from the shelf, would you like a glass? Indeed, said Anne. Thank you. I'll put the kettle on, said Anne, acting very grown up. We may want hot tea later. Look at that. They're about to have raspberry cordial. Diana drank glass after glass after glass of that pretty pink drink. By the time the kettle boiled, she looked sick. Oh, my stomach hurts, she said. I think I'd better go home. I'll help you, said Anne. Mrs. Berry was upset when she saw Diana leaning against Anne, looking woozy and rather green in the face. What have you done, Anne Shirley? She sounded cross. How careless of you to make Diana sick. Oh, Anne, Marilla said when she came home. You gave Diana the wrong drink. It wasn't raspberry cordial. No wonder she had an upset stomach. But when Anne and Marilla explained Anne's mistake, Mrs. Berry said, I knew it was wrong to trust an orphan. I forbid Anne and Diana to see each other again. Oh no, they can't be friends anymore. What's Anne gonna do? My heart is broken, sobbed Anne the next day. I'll die of grief. You won't, said Marilla, but perhaps you'll have be more careful in the future. Christmas came and Anne hoped that in the joy of the season, Mrs. Berry would change her mind, but she didn't. One January night, Marilla went to town. Suddenly, Diana burst in. My sister Millie May is very sick and panted. She can't breathe. Mother and father are out of town. I don't know what to do. Matthew immediately got up. He's going for the doctor, Anne said. Don't worry, I'll come. Lots of families that I have worked for had children and someone was always sick. I can help Minnie Mae. The girls raced across the snow-covered fields through the dark as fast as they could to the berry house. Poor Minnie Mae was feverish and coughing very hard. Minnie Mae has croup, said Anne. It's a bad case, but I've seen worse. Keep a cold cloth on her forehead, Diana. That'll bring her fever down. Hour after hour, Minnie Mae water and medicine. Much later, Matthew and the doctor arrived. Minnie Mae will be fine, Anne promised as Matthew took her home. Look at that. Aren't those pictures beautiful? Forgive me, Anne, said Mrs. Berry the next morning. The doctor told me you saved Minnie Mae's life. I hope you're, you'll be friends with Diana again. <laughs> we'll be the best of friends, said Anne. Anne hugged Diana tight. Diana gave Anne a card with a poem on it. If you love me as I love you, nothing but death can part us two. I'm the happiest girl in the world, exclaimed Anne. I have so much to be thankful for. Matthew and Marilla to love and look after me. Diana to be my best friend to cherish and Green Gables to be my beloved home forever. So even though the friends had a few issues, they were able to always be friends. All right, one more quick story before we do our final song. All right, so this next song book is called Fancy Nancy Pajama Get Day. Class, don't forget, Miss Glass says, tomorrow is Pajama Get Day, we shout in unison. That's a fancy word for all together. Look at that, isn't that just beautiful? So tomorrow is gonna to be pajama day. I plan to wear my new nightgown. I must say it's very elegant. Elegant is a fancy word for fancy. Then the phone rings, it Bri it's Brie. She says, I'm going to wear my pajamas with the pink hearts and polka dots. Do you want to wear yours? We can be twins. So look at that, her friend calls her so that they can be twins. 
Oh, I say, being twins would be fun. But then I look at my elegant nightgown. What a dilemma. That's a fancy word for problem. So she's wearing her fancy, her elegant nightgown right now. Finally, I make up my mind. I tell Brie I'm going to wear my brand new nightgown. Brie understands. She is my best friend. She knows how much I love to be fancy. The next morning at school, we can't stop laughing. Everyone's in pajamas, even the principal. He's carrying a teddy bear. Look at that. Did your principal ever do that? Mine sure didn't. Miss Glass has on a long nightshirt and fuzzy slippers. I'm the only one in a fancy nightgown. That makes me unique. That means one of a kind. Nancy, look, says Brie. Clara has on the same pajamas as me. Brie and Clara giggle. We're twins, said Clara, and we didn't even plan it. Look at that, they're wearing the same pajamas and they're twins. At story hour, Miss Glass had to spread our blankets. She reads a bedtime story. Clara and Brie lie next to each other. We're twins, Clara keeps saying. At recess, Clara takes Brie's hand. They run to the monkey bars. Come on, Nancy, Brie calls. But it's hard to climb in a long nightgown and I can't hang it upside down. Everyone would see my underpants. At lunch, I sit with Brie and Clara. They both have grape rolls in their lunch boxes. Isn't that funny, Nancy, said Clara. We even have the same dessert. Oh, look at Nancy's face. I think she's feeling a little left out. I do not reply. That's a fancy word for answer. Pajama day is not turning out to be much fun. I wanted to be fancy and unique. Instead, I feel excluded. That's a fancy word for left out. So look at that, she's really sad. She might be thinking that she's losing her best friend. The afternoon is no better. Clara and Brie are partners in folk dancing. Robert steps on my hem. Some of the lace trim on my nightgown rips. Uh-oh, she is just not having a very good day. At last the bell rings. I am glad pajama day is over. Do you want to come to my house to play? I ask Brie. Oh, but Brie can't come. She's going to Claire's house. I know it's immature. That's a fancy for babyish, but I almost start to cry. Look at that, she's really sad. Then as we're leaving, Brie and Clara rush over. Nancy, do you want to come over to my house and play too? Clara asks. Yes, I say. I just have to go home to change first. Now we are triplets. Look at that. She solved the problem. So they're all wearing the same outfit and she's made another friend. So making friends is really important and we should always make friends everywhere we go. My friend Nate is amazing at this friendship thing. He makes friends everywhere he goes, on vacation, at school, he makes everyone feel included. So let's sing another special song about friendship. So this song is one that I'm sure we are all familiar with, but we don't always realize that it's about friendship and it's called it's a small world. So this is an amazing song that teaches us about friendship. It's a world of laughter, a world of tears. It's a world of hopes and a world of fears. There's so much that we share that it's time we're aware it's a small world after all it's a small world after all all right there's just one moon and one golden sun and a smile means friendship to everyone Though the mountains divide 
and the oceans are wide. It's a small world after all. All right. Do you think you can sing that one with me? <laughs> all right. It's a world of laughter, a world of tears. It's a world of hopes and a world of fears. There's so much that we share that it's time we're aware. It's a small world after all. 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 It's a small, small world. There is just one moon and one golden sun, and a smile means friendship to everyone. Though the mountains divide and the oceans are wide, it's a small world after all. 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 It's a small, small world. Happy National Friendship Day, International Friendship Day. Everyone, I hope you have a beautiful day. Make some presents to give to your friends and make sure that you give them a call or a visit and let them know that you love them and that you consider them your friends. And if you're out and about, be sure to make new friends, um, especially at the park or the pool, because we all need more friends. I hope you have a beautiful, lovely day. And again, happy friendship day. And I will see you next time. Bye.